All right, Rockers Turbo, back here with you inside the asylum. I'm joined right now by someone I had the privilege to speak to a year ago, and we are linking up here again the singer of All Hail the Yeti, Connor Garrity, right now here inside the asylum from the road. How are you, Connor? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Doing really good. Congrats on the success to you and all the guys on the Screams from a Black Wilderness album. Oh, thank you, man. Very welcome, man. It's a, a great album, and uh, no surprise, it got acknowledgement from the industry, and it's been out about a year, and I know you guys uh, did some touring last year, and you're out there touring now. How's the feedback been for you guys uh, for the album now that it's been out there for about a year? Oh, it's been good, man. We've, uh, you know, tried our best to uh, stay positive with the lack of touring just because state of the industry and stuff like that but the the response with the record has been has been above and beyond what you know what we expected and everybody seems to love it so we're really happy with it you know we've, the reviews that come back and, and the ratings that we've got are just been great so we're pretty uh pretty pleased by it well that's good to hear man and uh i'm glad to hear you guys are back out on the road despite the industry getting in the way, and you know, I wanted to get your take, I mean, you guys are, this is your, your second album as a band, and you know, you guys are, are in a way still young to the industry and the way it is right now, you know, what do you feel, how do you feel as an up-and-coming uh, you know, band really working it, that things have gotten uh, as rough as it, it has. Um, I think that, like, you know, for a band at our level and the type of music that we're playing, it's a little bit tougher than, you know, say if you're in a pop band or, you know, hip hop or something like that. But, uh, you know, people just aren't spending money like they used to in music because they can get everything for free. It's, re you know, ready for them at their fingertips. So it makes it a little bit tougher. You got to work a little bit harder, and um, uh, you know it doesn't seem like it's going to be uh, changing too much. So you kind of have to adapt and figure out how to make it work for you and for the band to uh, to uh, to make it work. Right. I mean, understandable. You got to find what what works for you and the rest of the guys in order to keep going. Yeah, I know for you, you're a, a tattoo artist. When you're not out on the road, you've got your own shop out there, is it? Yeah, as an artist on two levels, is it hard to put down the tattoo machine to then get, go out and do your other art as a musician you know it's not i get that a lot and you think it would be i mean the, the hardest part about it is being away from the shop and you know trusting the staff that i have that work for me but um you know i've got a good crew of people that work work there and they handle everything really well and you know i'm just a phone call away most of the times and but as far as like um not you know putting down the tattoo machines and going on tour and vice versa it's uh, it's kind of nice because you know you get in any type of artistic venture that you do when you do it too much you kind of get burnt out you lose creativity and and inspiration so doing the band allows me to take a break from you know and decompress from from tattooing and then vice versa you know when I get when I get back from from working or when I get done finished uh, like on a tour and stuff it's like oh, okay cool I get to go back to my little zen spot and sit and create art in a cool tattoo studio, so uh, it, they work pretty good and they complement each other. 
Let's go on. Uh, when you're out on the road, do you get the chance to to do any tattooing while you're on the road, or do you go full on uh, music mode when you're out on the road? Um, I have. I've I've done it in the past. Um, and brought my stuff with me, and you know, work on other other guys and other bands and people on crews and stuff like that. But uh, it's a, it's a, it's really tough because there's I mean, as much as we're not. Um, busy when we're waiting around. There just seems like there's always something to do, or I'm always like scrambling to get things ready because we, you know, we we travel. We're pretty small with a small crew, so uh, I'm, you know, as well as being a singer, I'm tour managing and doing everything else, setting up merch, setting up gear. So you find it not really enough time by the time you get there and get everything done and ready. The doors are open and you know the night started. So. I think once we start touring a little bit bigger and have more of a crew and maybe a bigger bus and stuff like that, I'll probably do it. Um, but as for now, it's it's good to just just focus on the music while I'm out here. Yeah, sure. I mean, as you said, I mean, you are a jack of all trades. You know, doing everything and uh, working it out by by committee, and so I can understand that. Has anyone? come into the shop when you're not out on tour and not realize right away but then kind of have that moment of oh shit you're kind of all hell the yeti has, has that happened uh yet um you know not really i mean we haven't got to that level i don't think at, at this point um but I do definitely get people like hitting us up on our Facebook and stuff, and my Facebook, asking for tattoos. They want, you know, a couple people wanted to get the, you know, the all hail the Yeti logos done and stuff like that. Um, but every now and again, it'll happen. I'll be at somewhere, like you know, if we're playing in, in a certain town and somewhere close to, you know, a, a record shop or a cool bar or something like that. People sometimes will notice us, but it doesn't happen that often. Well, soon enough, uh, it will. The album definitely made enough noise and you guys are out there again doing it as we speak check out all hell the yeti online to find out when you're coming to return your you and you guys uh, also recently did a black sabbath cover on an, yeah. e on an ep what made you guys not only decide a Black Sabbath cover, but you guys also took a very deep track in their catalog. Uh huh. What made you decide to do such a a, a deep cut from Sabbath? Um, we actually were we were originally going to do a. Sorry, I'm outside. The cars are going by. I was originally we were originally going to do a. We're supposed to do a track for a Black Sabbath cover record that we got asked to do, and mm -hmm. I just my whole my whole thing about covers is I don't want to do a song that a, bu that a bunch of other bands have already covered, you know. And people usually go to the hits, you know, Paranoid, you know, Sweet Leaves. Like I don't want to do that. So, Killing Yourself to Live has always been a really good favorite song of mine. And I was like, well, let's just do this. No one's ever done it change it up a bit, make it a little bit more Yeti. And that's just what happened. Well, I gotta admit it to you. Uh, you guys did a great job with it. And, you know, oh, thank I, you. You're very welcome. And, you know, I, I'm kind of uh, particular about covers because I, I think you and I can agree there are bands that have done covers uh, and have uh, really destroy them, either going too different or not being the right band for it. You guys definitely were the right band to do a version of uh, this song. It fits, it fits your sound. And I, I want to ask also, um, how did you guys decide to release this as part of the Feed the Pigs uh, EP instead of 
doing a re-release of the of the album. Uh, we, I mean, we had re-recorded "Feed the Pigs" and the Black Sabbath song at the same session, so we had them done and kind of sitting and waiting. And you know, when we were deciding on doing this couple tours coming up and stuff, we just said, "Oh, you know what? Why don't we release those just to have something fresh start and give some give a couple songs instead of you know because we're not doing a new record yet, so give you know give them something a little bit more." We also did a couple remixes of some songs from the record. Uh, it's just, you know, just something to, to give the fans a little bit of uh, a little taste and keep them, tied them over to the actual records stuff. Sure, I can definitely understand that. What, what was it like for you guys working with Paul Wiley of Marilyn Manson on Nemesis Queen? Uh, Paul's a really, really good friend of ours. Um, he, uh, you know, he's a really, really good producer and he into a lot of cool music like that. And I just, when we, you know, the label wanted to do a remix, so he was naturally the first person I thought of. So, uh, and I think he did a great job. And, he, you know, I told him I wanted a kind of, like, darker... I mean, the Emissary and the Angel's Envy, and I wanted a kind of darker, like, Nine Inch Nails, uh, like, something I could never kind of vibe. I think he did a great job. He nailed it. Yeah, it definitely works. Nothing wrong with going uh, a little darker here and there, and sometimes it just takes the right guy to do it, and he definitely did a great job with it. That EP available on Bandcamp. And you guys, of course, as we said, we're talking to you on the road, trying to gather you've all held the Yagi out on tour right now with NVIDIA and Broken Rail. You guys are doing dates on the West Coast, couple in Texas, going through early June. Uh, are there any plans of heading east later this year? Uh, we're hoping to, for sure. Um, there's some talks of some stuff in the fall. So we're going to finish this tour, go home, and work some more on the new songs, get the rest of the record written, and then, uh, and then, yeah, there's a couple prospect tours that we're hoping for for early fall that'll take us right into, into the winter. So yeah, we'll be back there. The East Coast is really good to us, and we love touring over there. So we'll, we'll be back there for sure before the end of the year. Very cool. I, I, uh, you and I linked up on, on Facebook about a year ago when we uh -huh. spoke. And I noticed, uh, after the fact, you and I, while you were here on the East Coast, you and I happened to be at the same Iron Maiden show at the Garden. Oh, right. And, uh, right uh, are you a big, big Iron Maiden fan? Uh, you know, I grew up, you know, I was a young kid when Iron Maiden was in their heyday, for sure. You know, it was something that I was always a fan of. Uh, I, I'm not as big of a fan now, you know, per se, of their newer stuff, for the stuff in the last 10, 15 years. But yeah, I mean, the classics for sure. You know, it's it's that's another band that without Iron Maiden, there wouldn't be a lot of stuff that's around today. So, um, a good friend of mine that we toured with, his band is is Bruce Dickinson's son, Griffin. So he, uh, when I got off the plane, I was in New York for press for that for the for, for screams. And I saw the uh, Iron Maiden's plane at the airport. And I was like, oh, shit, they're in town. I better call. So I text Griffin, and he's like, you're, I got you, dude. You're all hooked up. So I got to go. It's my first time at the Garden, and I got to see Maiden and VIP. It was pretty awesome. Very cool. What, what, yeah. did, what did you think of, of the Garden? Because it has uh, been redone. So the Garden that you were in is the newer version of the garden what was your take of the building i thought it was amazing i mean i didn't even i didn't know that it was redone i thought it was just the garden but i mean it was really cool you know it was really cool to come out of the subway station and just it's just right there you know and that's a legendary building you know i grew up watching you know the rangers and the hockey so hockey's a huge i'm a huge hockey fan so uh it was great it was a great experience cool i didn't know we had that 
in common. I'm also a uh, a diehard Ranger fan. I mean, the Edmonton Oilers are my team, but I, I do like the Rangers. I can respect that. Both teams had a good run this year, so uh, neither one of us uh, can really argue too much no, about absolutely. that. So, you know, you talked about meeting being uh, a big inspiration to you in the, the classic bands. Are there any bands that are out there now that you would want to get out there and maybe work with and maybe do a tour with? Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Um, you know, there's always, like, the go-tos, like, Corrosion and Conformity, Down, a lot of the stuff that, that Phil and Samuel does, Probar, um, you know, and then there's, like, the bigger bands, too, that, that are doing a lot. You know, Lamb of God, um, Slipknot. I mean, there's just so many bands, and, uh, you know, to tour with bands like that would be, you know, legendary for us. So it's weird. It's like, it's bands that are, there's bands that I would love to tour with because of the exposure, and they're such big bands. And then there's bands that I'd love to tour with because I love the music, you know, and for me, I can take either way, you know? Sure, man. I mean, I've often found that the bands that go out together for the love of the music, they end up having a, a better time on the touring and clicking because there's more in common. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, man. I mean, that would be great stuff. We'd love to see you guys get out there with, uh, with Down. But uh, right now, you guys are out with NVIDIA and uh, Broken Rail. Uh, you had mentioned that you guys had started working on the follow-up uh, to Screams from a Black Wilderness. How far along are you guys? Uh, we've got about 10 songs written right now. And uh, we're looking to probably have about 20, 25 before we start recording. So we should be ready to ready by the end of the summer. So it's looking like we're going to record in the fall. And uh, probably for, you know, a spring 2018 release. Oh, very cool. So you guys have really been kind of working on it since the end of your last touring run. Yeah, you know, and for us it was just like we were, like I said before, we were ha we haven't had too much luck getting on any bigger tours for whatever reason. So we, uh, uh, you know, we may use the time wisely and put it to work and write some songs and keep ourselves busy. Well, that's definitely the right, the right way to do it. And definitely by today's standards, the right way to do it. The quicker you bang out albums, the more relevant you stay in people's minds. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. Well, glad to hear you guys are working on the follow-up from Screams. And definitely, guys, if you are part of the dates on which they are out on the road, go see All Hail the Yetis out on tour and right now with NVIDIA and Broken Rail. Connor, thank you for taking the time on the road to talk to me. I hope you guys keep kicking ass out there. And uh, what do you say I play the Black Sabbath cover that you guys awesome. did? Sound good to you? Sounds great to me, man. Thanks again for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, my pleasure. As always, Connor, go check out All Hail the Yeti, Feed the Pigs, EP, available now on Bandcamp. Here is their version of Killing Yourself to Live. 